I, I want to extend the grace just because just I know that I'm not perfect either. But it's still important to learn from them, right? I mean, the, the, their mistakes or failures are in there for a reason so that we can learn from other people's mistakes. We can learn when people do wrong so that we don't have to face the same thing. And one of the things that's really interesting about Peter, though, and Peter's a really interesting character in the scripture in general anyways. He's real um, driven and, and, and one of the top you know, disciples that we hear about him the most or close to the most uh, in the Gospels. And he, he has a, a lot of zeal. Right, he's the one that stepped out of the boat when, when Jesus, you know, called unto him. He's like, "Hey, Lord, if it's really you, bid me to come unto thee, unto the water." Right, Jesus walked out of water, and he had the faith and the courage to just step out in faith from the boat and walk on that water too. I mean, it's amazing. No one else did that, right? That was Peter. Peter has a lot of great qualities and things, um, and a lot to learn from. But he also has his own flaws as well. But one of the things here that we're going to see, obviously, just after this transpires, now Jesus is going to tell him what's going to happen at the end of his life. And look at verse number 18. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. He says, basically, you know, when you're young, you're able to do what you wanted. You gird yourself up and you go anywhere you want to go. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. So they're saying, you know, something's going to happen to you. They're going to stretch, stretch forth your arms, and you're going to be brought to a place where you don't want to go, right? And that, and he said, and it's the Bible says here, verse 19, this spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. So he's giving him this prophecy of what's going to happen to Peter in the future. And, you know, Peter hears this, and it says, um, Excuse me, let's keep reading verse number 19. It says, This make he signifying by what day they shall glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. And the title of my sermon this morning is Follow Thou Me. Okay? And I know I kind of went into a lot of backstory there with Peter, but, you know, it's all just laying the groundwork for what I want to get into. Jesus tells Peter, you know, here's basically the death that you're going to have to suffer for me. And he just tells him, follow me. And Peter sees John and he's going, okay, well, what's that guy going to do? And he starts worrying about what other, someone else's ministry is going to be. What's their life going to be like? What are they going to do? And Jesus basically says, you know what? Don't worry about that. You've got enough to worry about just by you following me. Don't worry about what other people are going to do with their life and how they're going to serve me and everything else that they're going to end up doing. He says, just follow me. And what, he, what Jesus ends up saying then is that, you know, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? So basically saying, if I want him just to be around until I come back, until I return, how does that affect you at all? That's none of your business. It doesn't matter. I'm going to choose different people to glorify me in different ways. You know, there's different disciples. There's different followers of Jesus Christ that some of them end up becoming martyrs, right? But not all of them. We see, you know, Stephen was a martyr, right? Way back in the book, in, in Acts chapter 7, we see that happening. But you know what? Not every single disciple is going to go down that route. And we have a path to walk. We have a ministry. We have a purpose. We have a life to live of dedication and and service unto the Lord. And different people are going to be on different paths as the Lord will. And we don't need to get caught up and start worried about what other people are doing because we have our own walk. We've got our own job. We've got our own priority. We We got our own, you know, life to live and our own concerns and our own cares when it comes to serving the Lord. We don't need to get wrapped up in anyone else's business when it comes to their service to the Lord. 